we have an agenda in front of us, and if I can have a motion to accept today's agenda, if you raise your hand, somebody raise your hand and say your name out loud so that our colleague, we have a, Aubrey Millard has put his hand up and made a motion to accept today's agenda. Can I have a seconder, please? Can I have a seconder, please, in the audience? Let me raise my, oh, I see one back there, all the way back. And uh, Frida, uh, yes, I can drive me. Frida Hackajami, all in favor? Oh, well, I see a sea of hands, that's fantastic. We also have a motion to accept the agenda minutes of May the 24th, 2018. I need a motion to accept those. You probably had a chance to read them. And Doris Reed. Doris Reed, can somebody second that, please? Let's have a look in the audience. Yes? Irene White, Irene White has seconded all in favor. Fantastic. Well, here we are today, and I'm going to, uh, because of course it needs a little bit of support, if I put this next to my ear, I'd like you all to stand please for the playing of our national anthem. For the singing. I'm going to encourage you to sing, because I know you've got great voices. Three cheers to Canada. I must tell you at this moment, uh, I've just completed in the last four weeks multiple trips across this country, one of them done by Via Rail Canada. And if you want to see your country, if you want to be proud of us from coast to coast, I would encourage you to get on the Canadian, go down to the end of the Sal Boulevard or over to Cape Real, and get on the train and go and find out where places like, oh my goodness, you just Foliette, for example. I just had Paul Lefebvre, I mean, I hope many of you got to shake hands with Paul Lefebvre and, and share a few thoughts with him. Uh, I mentioned to him that uh, my father used to get sent up to Foliet because the people in Toronto would say, well, just go up to Foliet, it's not far. And it was quite a distance away. Number five on the agenda, and Sandra has reminded me, I'm sure she would if she hasn't already, to keep to the agenda. Number five says, Chair's Report and AGM Committee Reports. And if you turn to the fourth sheet of paper, you will find that I do have a message from the Chair. And it is my time to, to basically read that to you. Uh, before I do, I do want to indicate that we have in the audience as well, Merit Travel, you probably noticed them and as you approached uh, um, the front doors. The Sudbury Theatre Centre is here as well in the presence of John McHenry. He is uh, gracing the table number 10. If you haven't met John yet, you should. John, wave, wave your hands. Very one, we just wave one hand. I have a person close to uh, Aubrey Millard from Elliott Lake, as I mentioned, he's here with a petition that might interest some of you. Uh, he uh, will certainly chat with you if you uh, have a, a question about health care, especially if you're out of the province, he would like to talk to you. Um, from all the way from Barry and beyond, I had their cards a few moments ago. Uh, we have from uh, Dignity. And if you could raise your hands, we have Josephine, and the gentleman's name is Alan Glanfield. We're there, right at the back table, the back table right there. Uh, delighted to have you all the way from Barrie, Ontario. I think you're both from Barrie. 705 numbers. You're in our, you're in our dialing code. You're okay. We, we will accept you. Uh, before I forget, uh, the Sudbury Theatre Centre has announced its season 40. 48. 48. My God, it's almost as old as I am. Uh, season 48, uh, all for one is the season title, right, John? Okay, so you can grab one of those from John. Sorry to go back to to that item. Uh, many of you will have got I have received a copy of the CARP chapter newsletter. Many of these are now delivered electronically rather than by print, although we do a print once in a while. Uh, one more item to add for, for two, actually, I apologize. One more item to add on this point. Uh, Home Instead celebrated its first annual uh, annual senior prom. After many years of operation, they wanted to get back to community in a large sense. And uh, uh, marvelous pictures, thank you. Where's our friends from Home Instead? Yeah, they're, they're going to be involved in something after this activity. Thank you very much. That's a great act. Wasn't it fun? It was a lot of fun. How many of you attended the senior prom? There, and we have the king and queen of this. Can you stand for a second? Woo! Do a right? There we go. They, yes. Now Jack and I are teammates from long ago, right Jack? 
My goodness, a long time ago. And last, before we, uh, I bring it, launch into my little speech, I want to mention that uh, I have received something from Dave Hodge. This is a bulletin, uh, mostly from the retired teachers of Ontario. They are holding, let me get the exact uh, wording for this. It is a $12 registration fee only if you were wishing to stay for lunch. The event is a Lunch and Learn on Social Isolation, hosted by the Retired Teachers of Ontario, Sudbury, Manitoulin, Wednesday, June the 5th. I have some sheets here, held at the North Bray Hotel. I almost said it. I almost said the other name. The North Bray Hotel, right here, June the 5th. So it's not that far away. They have a keynote speaker, Joanne Sobey. She is the director of the Retired Teachers of Ontario Foundation. There's a roundtable discussion in English and French and a, soup, a salad and sandwich lunch. You can contact Dave Hodge. I have a number of um, flyers here for him. And if you turn to page five at this point, So I'm never quite sure exactly how to uh, really measure our year. And, uh, but to report on the things that went well and perhaps suggest some large and small targets and goals for next year. I'm gonna stick to that formula here. There's uh, a desire though first to get something out. It's been my pleasure to be your voice, your carp, touchstone, your connector between national issues and local implications. And I cannot believe that it has been almost five, five fascinating years. I hope this year we'll find internally, or from membership, a friend of Carp Sudbury who will begin taking over the role of chair or chair in training. And not only is my term ending in 2019-2020, yes, I know it can be renewed, or I can take on another role, but I believe a fresh set of eyes, ears, and perspectives will move you forward better than I can. And so I ask, who is willing to take up the baton? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Maybe one of you. I hope all of you. I hope I get 160 applicants. What is this year brought? Successes, interesting meetings, continued support for science of Science North. Oh my God, we have to thank Science North. I'm sorry that Anne's not here. I don't know where she is. She said she was coming. Um, science North, I just met with them yesterday. We are talking about doing a couple of projects together that you will be delighted to hear about in the near future. Watch this space. Yeah, well, we've got a strong board. They continue to serve you from meetings with ministers, representation in conferences, roundtables, symposiums on aging, wellness, poverty, housing. So much collaborative work across the community, including work with the municipality, helping families and individuals. It's all been a rich experience. Even the outreach by members of the board and trips to contact places like Elliott Lake, Espanola, Burner, Sturgeon Falls, North Bay. I have to thank members of the board who took those trips. Thank you so much for getting in your cars and going there with our banners, our magazines, all those things, and reaching out. There are no other car groups in Northern Ontario. We are it. And with that, we have to carry the flag for the rest of Northern Ontario. It is important to show national just how big the geography is up here. Well, here's another piece of 21st century news. It's the end of the phone committee. The phone committee may not have been something on your radar, but it exists, and it has existed and been very important. It signals a change with this loss on how we reach members. Yes, now many of you receive material electronically or through an informal network, because it does exist. I know my mother, there she is over there, you can wave your hand in the air. There, we, there she is. She does call several of her friends and when we have a meeting around the corner, and I'm certain that many of you in the audience do that as well. It is my time to mention or acknowledge from the board the years of dedication of all the phone committee members. This includes some no longer with us, like Millie Faka. And those who are here today, bravo. I want to thank Cora specifically for heading up this communication network. Cora, can you stand and be acknowledged? There she is. Cora's going to step forward this time, and she is going to, she's got a number of things to do. Cora, come and join me up here. This one seems to be the best. I don't think anybody could say it better than you've already said it, but I'd like to acknowledge the people who have worked with me for so long 
And uh, they were very dedicated for a long period of time. So um, I'm going to call up Keith Argent and Irene Sachetto, Wally Brooks, Judy Zilio, Pat Bradley's not here, I think, Mary Jo Dowdle, and Josie McLaughlin. Would you come forward and just get your card? Thanks. I think Keith is going to take a picture of everybody there. Yeah, why not? Keith, are you going to do a selfie with everybody? I'll scan myself in later. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here comes the rest of the phone committee. So important to sharing the information with everybody. As it is with Marianne's work to get posters out, or Irene's, you probably hear Irene on CBC, right? You heard Irene when she says that a car needs to come in. Let's get a photo. Yeah, here we go. Marianne's telling you to cuddle up. There we go. Bravo. Thank you so much. The end of the year, the end of the party today. And of course, no Millie Faka, that, uh, that's such a, uh, a giving person in the community. Well, we've done flag raisings, we've prepared submissions, we've supported projects and research. This past week, I met with Science North to talk about filling an application for funding to support more engagement between older adults in the Science Center. I enjoyed participating, as I mentioned, in the senior prom and uh, congratulate them. Uh, I want to talk about helping also with public housing uh, elections and volunteering at the mission recently, which I did. Uh, there's so many things we need to think about, including, and this is one that I think we should maybe focus on in 2019-2020, seniors who we don't see, seniors who are maybe not part of our socioeconomic spectrum, they fall outside that. So going to the mission and seeing seniors lining up for food, seniors in shoes, footwear that don't fit them, seniors who obviously have not had any care at all, it's, it's really distressing. Will we collaborate with India Cinema to do another film series? Does everybody remember the film series that we did a few years ago at uh, the St. Andrew's Place? Does remember that? That was a great activity. So we'll do one maybe with Indie Cinema. Uh, yes, that's in process. What about the Canadian Heart of Hearing Association, Keith? We're going to work with them again? Where's sure. there? Yeah, there he is over there. Uh, and of course, yes, the Ultimate Dream Home. Uh, many of you have supported that, and many of you come out to do volunteer work. I want to take a moment to thank the board for their hard work, and those who take time of their out of the month, week, days to dedicate to CAR. And to you, who come to our AGM faithfully, and again to the Northbury staff who welcome us annually, for this activity. Merci. I want to also acknowledge one more person in the audience, if I may. I mentioned traveling across Canada, and I think my understanding of Canada was enriched by my grade nine geography teacher. Right over there. That's Terry Martin. Terry's here with a group who've come to listen as well. Terry's part of a, a seniors organization, right? Uh, yep, there we go. There's Terry over there. You can chat with him as well. At this time, let's turn back to the front page, and uh, Sandra will nod to me to continue. Uh, I don't think Richard Denton is actually in the audience today. I don't see Richard here today. So let me take a moment. Uh, oh, no, we need to do other things. Treasurer's report, I apologize. Uh, there are all the committee reports. There's the treasurer's report. Well, I don't think we have to. Miss, we don't have to vote on that, do we, Sandra? Uh, we, we do. We need somebody to make a motion then to accept the treasurer's report. Somebody to do that. Yes, Cora. Thank you very much, Cora. Seconder. Who will second that? Uh, Mary, Mary Ann Dickram. Thank you so much. All in favor? Because the treasurer's report is important. Very good. Uh, we have uh, a board election. It says right here on item seven, renewing board members. Well, as I mentioned, uh, it is the end of my term. We still have John Lindsay. We have Ken Desjardins, who is working as our, our treasurer. We have Keith Argent. We have Irene Sichetto. We have Marianne Dickram. And a returning board member, Sandra Desjardins. Um, what do we have to do at this point, Sandra? 
Nothing? Okay, just man. Excellent. So now I can move on with grace. And uh, I do want to thank, I don't know, for the third time, all the hard work of the people. But you know what? Further behind us and was here at this hotel where I had a chance to meet many. Oh, I have to stop again. Oh, sorry, I don't know why you're not on. Joey Huerta, I'm so sorry, and Lisette Huerta. How did we forget both of you? I apologize. There we go. I'm delighted that you're going to do that. Uh, sorry, just slipped. Uh, yeah. I'm not seeing Richard, I think I have to slip gears here. I want to thank the farmers who grow our food. Uh, I met, in fact, I'm, I ordered a goat. <laughs> No, see, that'll stop you suddenly. You say, what is he ordering a goat for? I ordered a goat from a young farmer. He's 10 years old. It's his third year of operation, and he is raising goats in uh, the Werner area. His family has a wonderful grass-fed uh, farm, and uh, I ordered half a goat, actually. I'm going to share it with a friend of mine who is of uh, African heritage, uh, or at least her husband was. Uh, they use goat in their cuisine quite often. Um, we need to thank the farmers who grow our food. We need to thank the federal government who support, supports the farms, the provincial government who gets involved in all kinds of things like transportation to make sure we can get our food to our tables. The people who bring the food, like Flanagan's and, uh, and uh, Ice Cap and uh, what's the large company that brings food to, to the organization. That there's all these people, this complete system that's out there. And on this planet, we are incredibly lucky. Us here in Canada, us here in this room. We are well, we are well fed, and we're going to be well fed now. So in your own words, in your own mind, if you'd like to close your eyes for just a few seconds to remember all the people who are involved and the systems that bring the food and the people who deliver it to your place. Thank you. Keith, you have a methodology. I do. Your table has a number. <clears throat> your numbers range from 1 to 23. And Keith is going to announce. Now, there are there are benefits. There is a table. And Keith, are you doing that one first? Going to do it first. Do you come on up and tell him what happened? He's got one in his hands. I'm going to visit that table. <laughs> table number 19, where are you? Where is 19? Table 19? There You're last, and you get the wine. <laughs> so the benefit of, of being last is that you just sit at your table, and Keith comes to visit you with these two bottles of wine. And that makes everybody at that last table, instead of grumbling, it makes them happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Keith, you have to tell me who is first to go up. Ladies, are you ready? They're ready to roll. Keith oh, is going to tell us. He's got his random number generator. And uh, we're gonna, electronic, too. Electronic. And listen to my voice or Keith's voice over the next little while. Number 14. Number 14, if you'd like to come forward. Number 10. And number 10. Oh, sorry. I know I am. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little extra bill. I think it's time for me to have a Hello, everyone. How are we all doing today? I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Good? How are we all doing today? Yay! Awesome. So I think we'll start with introductions first, if you guys want to. Um, my name is Gwen Price, and I'm a realtor with Keystone Real Estate here at Sudbury. Okay. Turn up the volume. Of course there's technical difficulties. Okay. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. My name is Gwen Price, and I'm a realtor here in Sudbury. My name is Lizette Werda, and I'm the owner of Home Instead Senior Care. I'm Nikki Sage, and I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator with Home Instead Senior Care. And my name is Joy Warda, and I am the owner and founder of Dragonfly Advisory Services in Death Doulas. And we're Asian Action. Action. 
So we're here talking about the burning issues that are affecting our community. Um, there's many different topics and discussions, and uh, we're going to be entering into season two. So Joy, would you like to introduce our guest? Of course. Uh, we were very fortunate last year in season one to have a wonderful uh, opportunity to work with Eastlink, uh, hit up some hot topics of Northern Ontario and the North in general. And one of our guests that was actually well received and some of the analytics that came back from Eastlink that was very positive was Dr. Kayla, who's here with us today. Dr. Kayla is a naturopathic physician here, doctor in our community, and she actually did an episode with us, uh, Sex Behind Closed Doors. So welcome, Dr. Kayla. Thank you so much for having me. Hold on, sorry. Testing. Uh-oh. Testing. No, we've got back here, so we're okay. <laughs> yeah, so my name is uh, Kayla. I'm a naturopathic doctor in Sudbury, and I work at Nickel Ridge. It's a integrated health clinic in New Sudbury. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with what naturopathic doctors are, I get that question a lot. Uh, naturopathic doctors are trained in the same context as your family doctor, but our treatment approach is different. We work on optimizing your lifestyle. We spend a lot of time with you. So typically we'll go to your family doctor maybe for five or 10 minutes. We spend upwards of an hour to really listen to your health concerns. And I was really privileged um, last season with Aging in Action to be brought on to talk about some topics on sex in the aging population that tend to be really taboo and things that people don't normally feel comfortable with. So thank you again for having me on season. Testing. Nope. A lot of work. Sorry. So the reason we brought Aging in Action today with the Park Sudbury Annual General Meeting is we thought it was a great opportunity to get some feedback from our community, from those that are, as we're getting older, there's always topics of concern, and there's always hot issues, as Lizeth mentioned, that we often don't want to address. So today is our opportunity for a couple of reasons. One is season two is coming in, so we're able to discuss some of the topics that maybe are of interest to you, things that we need to address in Northern Ontario, things that are important to you as CARP members. And for the programming side of it, I also am the programming director for CARP, so it's a double duty for me. Dr. Kayla, I have to ask, so when you did last year's season, was there any, was it comfortable for you? Was it a topic that you thought was important to our community? Absolutely. So these are topics that I talk about that I bring up with patients all the time and I find that it's more so patients who feel uncomfortable discussing these topics but a lot of times when you open the door and then you let the questions flow through, people are very receptive to sharing with you their thoughts, their opinions, their questions, things that they didn't think that necessarily uh, are important about their health. Because sexual things are also important about your physical health as well, so it all gives us insight onto how to treat you as a person to optimize your quality of life. So yeah, it was a great topic and um, brought up a lot of interesting points of <laughs> discussion for sure. There was a lot of things that I learned that day. I found that was one of our biggest things with our um, episodes last season was every single episode I learned something from our I learned something from our guest speakers. It was very educational that way. Well, as the token senior on Aging in Action, um, there's many things that I'm concerned about as I age in Northern Ontario, and I'm. From my occupation, um, even though it's great, I want to sell houses, but I'm also very worried about the housing situation for seniors. And is it affordable? Not everybody can afford to go into a, a $4,000 a month retirement home. So what are we going to do? So, yes? I think we need to, can we crank the volume a little bit more? Iron Man, could you help us out? <laughs> Yay, round of applause. So, so maybe we should do a check, a test, and see if the back... Well, I'd like to get the cordless ring this while I'm working, too, uh, if possible. Oh. It, it sounds really loud to me, but maybe not out there. <laughs> Can everybody hear us now? Yeah. Better? Good? Believe me, I don't need a mic. I can usually just talk and everybody listens. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding back too. <laughs> uh, 
as we mentioned, it was important for us to get feedback from our community. So is there a topic out there that you feel is important that we should be addressing in our community today? Now is your chance. <laughs> Put up your hand. We're filming season two, so we're here so, to learn. So everything's good for seniors, right? We're all, oh, there's so you, you can't. <laughs> No, no, she was talking about you. Oh, there. I'm talking about season. So I'm assuming this is a broadcast season. Absolutely. Yeah. We're on we East Link. Where is broadcast if we get to see it? Good idea. So we're on East Link television. It's screaming back. In. So we pay weekly on East Link. Um, Pretty much. We do have a podcast, have a podcast. so yeah. you can listen to the episodes, but you wouldn't be able to see it unless you have Eastlink. You can definitely go to our website, and on the website actually has a podcast link that will allow you to click on it and listen to every episode. That is a forum, unfortunately, as we are part of Eastlink's format for community TV. We are limited, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean we don't try and figure out alternate ways to get the stories that are important out to the public. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed. Which is why we're here today. Um, we're here to reach out to, to the members and find out what issues are, are a concern to you. And maybe we can add those as a topic um, in our upcoming season and look at bringing guests around that topic. You have a question? Uh, not a question, more of a statement. Uh, there's a lot of us getting older and can't afford four thousand dollars a month to go into a retirement home. And families that are willing to have a parent or parents live with them, there's a very few homes in Sunbury that are available or being built where they have reasonable accommodation for grandma or grandpa or both to have privacy in a home that doesn't end up where the family that owns the home is squished in. Yeah. So, Kind of well, like. and one of the things I run across all the time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to get you to speak up because I'm at okay. the back too, and I, I, I'm just put that energy into it. And we've got a lot of crossover too, but okay. so sorry to. Yeah. She's she's asking about housing homes, family homes where your extended family can live together, rather than trying to. Uh, have the senior live separately in a retirement home. One of the things the city has is allowing secondary units in all zoning. Before you need to have uh, R2 zoning to have two units in a house. Now you are allowed to have a secondary unit and that is trying to address the senior's issue uh, but it's not the whole answer because very few units have been registered but I get asked all the time for houses that have accommodation and part of that is to have your senior or maybe the the adult child have an apartment in the same property it definitely I think uh, it's a real good discussion that we should be having with our city because they really need to relax some of the criteria that they're that they're putting on these secondary units. Um, I know a few people that want to do it, but for whatever reason, some of the restrictions are not allowing them to go forward with registered units. So for me, that's a big problem. And as a senior, I want to know where I'm going to end up too. So uh, it's something that I think the city really needs to address in a, um, in a stronger way than they are right now. Because if you are thinking about doing this, you don't want to be inclusive of the family. Here, we'll just get you up to the, the Devin's microphone right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Hi. Um, if you are thinking of doing grandma or grandpa yeah. or both in with the nuclear family, yeah. you don't want to be intrusive upon them, but by the same token, you don't want to be in the closet. No, and you don't want to necessarily be in the basement where, where there's no light. 
school and, to and stairs to deal with at yeah. an age when that's difficult. There, there's some of the builders are starting to address that issue uh, in that they're building, um, you can, while it's under construction, you can address and have an in-law in suite. But, it's, but there's not enough of it. There's yeah, not there's anymore. not enough. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Yeah. But that's a wonderful topic to bring to our attention because it's something we know of interest and something we have to do to make better in our community, right? To help have those healthy conversations today will be for a better tomorrow. Definitely. So we've heard a great conversation piece about uh, housing and communities. Is there another topic you feel that's very important in our community that needs to be addressed today? Show your hand. All right, Mr. Do. <laughs> Come on up here. Have a seat. So I touched on it earlier. It's the question of seniors we don't see. The seniors that are not able to get out or attend things, but more importantly, seniors who have perhaps a financial constraint on everything they do. Um, and of course, we need to talk about social isolation. As many, and I won't say it, there are many senior men who refuse to get hearing aids or get improved hearing aids. And with that, it leads to misunderstandings and retreat because they can't involve themselves in conversations. One of them lives in my house. In your house? Yeah. One in your house? Yeah. Okay, come see what? I'll give you my telephone number. I keep saying get a hearing aid, but uh, so know. far. <laughs> So it's three things, four things. Okay, Mickey, I have to get up and say something because there's a huge issue about brain injury in the community and you may not even know that it's there, but it's there and you'll recognize it once I say it, that women who are battered go through so many concussions and if you know anything about hockey players and their concussions, they don't go back to work until that concussion is healed. But women that are having repeated concussions on unhealed concussions are in trouble for serious brain injury. And it's happening in our neighbors' homes behind the doors. They don't have a team to um, uh, feel sorry for them or uh, even see a doctor often because of shame and other reasons. So I think it's a huge issue in our community. And uh, I know that at a conference in, that was held in North Bay at North Bay Regional Hospital, we had over 200 participants from across the Northeast, either webcasting, OTN, or in person uh, to hear more about this. We brought experts up from the states uh, because if they get battered brains, it leads to dementia and stroke, and probably uh, the, the um, the damage to the brain that these sports figures are having, and they get more concussions than those guys do in their career. Thank you so much, Crystal, for sharing. I'm glad you came up to the microphone, and I just want you to know that you might be pleasantly surprised that there's a topic around that for season two, so I thought I'd share that. And also, when it comes to housing, that is a topic also that we have for season two, which I'm honored to say that we will be looking at housing options in our community. So I think girls were kind of getting over right foot so far, right? But it'd be great to hear back uh, from anybody else out there that has some thoughts and suggestions. Yeah, the government um, said something about um, dental work to seniors, and I don't know if anything has come through with that. That would be nice to have them investigate. So on the health topics, more, um, I guess, options in health care. That makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Maybe part of the reason some people that are seniors aren't able to get anywhere is because they don't drive anymore. They don't have a, a way of getting somewhere. They can't really afford it. So I think if there was some way of having transportation that was more readily available for people who can't get out unless they're isolated. Yes, that, that's a hot topic. Transportation. And I know that the city's undergoing a whole restructuring of the transit system. Yeah. I'm not sure if they launched that yet. Uh, August. Yeah, it launched in August. Push it closer to your 
closer to my mouth? Yeah, there you go. Okay, sorry. Sorry. So, we are really close. I know that the city is actually in the process of restructuring the whole Sudbury Transit. Um, I don't know if it's been, what, 20, 30 years that it hadn't changed. And with all the new developments, there's no bus stations there. So I know that the city is working hard on, on realigning and, and, and changing the busing system. And hopefully, uh, that'll address a lot of, uh, you know, older population having a, an easier time taking the bus. But I think if we did focus a topic, uh, whether it's this season or next season, on the transportation issue, I think that's a good idea, girls. Yeah, and I also know there's many organizations in our community, a couple here actually, that also provide transportation for seniors in the event that they can't get from A to B. That being said, I think a lot of the organizations are now being posted on the Greater Sudbury website uh, with supportive programming available. So if you have access to the internet too, you might be able to reach out and get more information, but that is definitely, transportation is a hot topic in the north. There's some areas of northern Ontario that don't even have transit, right? So they don't even have public transportation. I don't believe that Espanola does. Yeah. Is there anybody here from Espanola? Yeah. Yeah, they don't, right? They don't have transportation. So that is definitely a topic that we have to address. And I think the stronger our voice, the more attention we will get in the north to make change. But if we don't utilize our formats today to make that change, it's never going to happen. So today's a great opportunity to start those conversations. You got a nice strong voice, you keep getting louder and louder as you go. I think I'm learning how to use the mic. One of the things that Joy t touched on is a lot of times when there's a senior event going on in Sudbury, that the city of Sudbury actually, if you could call and find out, sometimes the, the, that event, if you get on the bus and you say, hey, I'm going to this event, the bus ride's free. So those are things that, as a senior you need to look into. Um, because it doesn't always cost money to take the bus. One of our episodes last year was about uh, busing and involving um, dementia. Alzheimer's. Getting, yeah, Alzheimer's. Getting a, yeah, on Alzheimer's. the bus. That's right, yeah. So what is the concern? Oh, snowbanks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Don't even get it started on parking downtown. Yeah. Well, yeah. How many two I want? Try and climb up the snowbank, fall. Try again, climb up the snowbank, fall. Yeah, you should be able to just tap it with your credit card so you don't have to get so close. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> Alright, so we've touched on transportation, housing, we've touched on obviously some, you know, when it comes to brain injuries, and we've also some options and care when it comes to dental. Is there anything else? Oh, I see you. Yes, sir. I can afford it. Oh, I will do it from here. We, uh, we're facing a challenge at the hospital. The other night was what, 32% over capacity? Yes. yes. I think if you get Dominic Giroux into that, Don, see, so he's, he's already, already on season two. And hard. <laughs> hard. I'm telling you, it can't go on. It really can't. I get phone calls, not daily, but weekly, from probably four or five people saying, I went to my mother, my father, I couldn't believe hallway medicine is being practiced here in Sudbury. And practiced daily. This has got to stop. I, I can address that a little bit also, and, and we have to also take into consideration that our Health Sciences North is definitely over capacity to some days. I think today, the announcement was it was under, or just at a lower number for this week alone. They do work hard. They are diligent. They are over, the staff is overwhelming, and they do the best they can with the tools and resources they have available to them. That being said, we also have an aging population, right? So we're trying to pick that, fix that mix. But definitely, uh, Mr. Guru is definitely looking at coming on to this season two. We have that already in the works with him, and we're looking forward to that conversation, and hopefully we'll bring some education to it. Because Aging in Action, I think, ladies, is about education. Oh, definitely. Um, that's what we are, educating our community the best that we can. <laughs> and being a platform for change, right? Yeah, for sure. A unique platform, but a platform for change. <laughs> because as we age, our world evolves. I mean, we have to change the world with our... Well, there's a, there's a wave of us baby builders, and I don't think our city's prepared for it. And there's lots of discussion that needs to, to you know, be going on going on a daily basis, because I'm concerned. <laughs> I want to know what's going to happen to me, and it's already here, and the wave is just going to get worse. So we have to talk about it all the time and try to get some changes made. 
And uh, I don't know what the answers are, but I want to be part of the discussion. Definitely. Well, we have someone coming up to see Dr. King a lot. There's two things that I want to say, one on a positive note, and that's in the city of Sudbury, there's a very good geriatric clinic. It, it is awesome, I, I can't say that enough. The second thing I want to say is kind of negative, but as far as that hospital, the hospital initially was built too small, and it wasn't as if they weren't told, because all the employees had meetings to tell them they're not going to be able to house the, the patients. Yeah. And I agree that the, the building was not, there was a lot that wasn't taken into consideration, but the individuals that work there do the best job they can. Well, I know they've added a little piece, right, to the hospital. Maybe they need to add four or five more floors, maybe. Oh, we have a, a hand up. Dr. Kalen? Oh, oh it oh, doesn't go that No, far. I think he's just waving his hand. Wave his hand. Oh, oh I want tea. Oh, you're looking, you're looking at the wrong person. Oh, am I? I'm looking at the wrong person, apparently, because I told him. I might have one solution to this hospital. Um, problem. We have um, Cecil Facial School that is empty. There are policemen there. If they would take the people that are at the hospital, the people that are brought in because they're drunk or because they have been on drugs of some sort, bring them over there. They have the police there because I know I've been there <coughs> with my mom. and. These people are walking around, they're very disturbing. They're not sick except for the problems that they have. That way it would clear the hallways, it would clear the hospitals. People that would be at the hospital would be there for, uh, for a good reason. Let some other people go together, have a doctor over there. And that way it'd be a lot more and there's too many seniors that are in the hospital that shouldn't be in the hospital. And they need more support in the community and at home. But that's some really great words. Thank you so much. That actually, yes, it's wonderful to hear. Yeah. It was a, a topic just before the hospitals about aging. I used to be very active with the Canada Senior Games when the age was, the uh, senior age was recognized as 55. At one time they had lowered the age of 55 for a lot of senior activities here in the area. And I've heard since that they've raised it back again. I don't know if this is a particular topic that you would know about or anything, but then when they changed it from 65 to, from 55, they changed it from 65 to 55 because Canada Senior Games recognizes 55 as senior that um, there is always a, a gap there that some places recognizes it and some don't where age is, I'm not talking pensions, I'm talking uh, recognition for parking, recognition for uh, going to movies, uh, a lot of activities like that is, do we know where it's at right now? I think that's a little bit individual. I mean, I know myself, it's, it's funny, but not every time I go to the drugstore in my building, uh, she gives me the senior's discount. And, and it's a toss up, do I want to get the money off or do I want to scream at her to say I'm not 65 yet, right? So I think it's very individualized a little bit when it comes to the different businesses. Wait, I cry. <laughs> yeah, there is no consistency. It's, it does seem to be uh, depending on the business involved. I qualify no matter what now, so. <laughs> You're one of the lucky ones now. Yeah. <laughs> Is there, oh, we have a gentleman coming. Thank you. How many people here have not been able to hear as well as they'd like to the discussions that are going on? Raise your hand, you just want to get a real good feel for it. Now, the Loopy is available from the Canadian Harding Heart of Hearing Association. They get involved with this. Places like this where we come together to 
try to get a handle on what is going on in our community and what we can do to make things better, can't hear all the conversation. Looping is one of the systems that helps the service. The uh, theater, separate theater now has looping their compliments of the Canadian Heart of Hearing Association. A number of churches, some of the banks, places like this should consider looping and have it available so that their audience can enjoy and participate much more actively. Thank you. That's a really good point, and I think more and more organizations should look into Loopy. I'm familiar with it. My husband wears hearing aids. I mean, we we have it in our home, and there's oftentimes even when you are hearing uh, wearing hearing aids, sound difference, right? Sometimes it echoes, or you can't listen to one conversation at the same time, or it sounds like everything's muffled. And I think that's a really good point, and I think that's something we need to address more and more. Community organizations should be having that function available so that when it is an event it is more um, for those in with that John hearing area. Thank you, that's awesome. That's great, because I had no idea. Like, the, I just learned something new today, so now I can go home. <laughs> <laughs> is there any other questions about what community would like to see or hear? Then we've actually hit our 30 minute mark, so if Dr. Kayla can come back up. Thank you. Thanks. We know everyone's excited to get home. Uh, we also understand that everybody wants to enjoy the rest of the afternoon and hear Hugh's final words and get to the draws. But I would like to take this opportunity that if in the time that you feel there's something you need that needs to be addressed, but you are maybe not comfortable in a public area discussing it or it's a topic that you just think is more personal, please feel free to reach out to us at our website. Send us a comment section, send us an email, We'd love to hear from you. We want to take this information back to Eastlink, back to our forum, so that when we do our producers meetings, we actually know what our community would like to hear about. But thank you. So Dr. Kayla, <laughs> any words of wisdom as we're getting older? Oh, here, yeah. I think meetings like this and being able to talk about it and being very open about it is the best way to initiate change and to never be fearful to um, voice your opinion and talk to your healthcare provider or whoever it might be on your healthcare team about your concerns. Because I'm a huge advocate for empowering you to be passionate about your own health and to really understand things. So I think this is great and um, congratulations to everyone for making it out to this meeting as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for the Thank you everyone. Okay. All right, sir, where's you? Oh, he, he has left the building. He's quiet. Go figure. He took a break. <laughs> Keith, you're the villain. <laughs> He's coming. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Thank afternoon. You. Just, uh, I want to thank the North Korea for that roast beef. I, I don't get roast beef uh, often enough. Well, you wouldn't believe that. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's hard to do a roast beef that's, you know, you need a big chunk of meat to do it properly. Too often we only get a two pounder or something. Well, it is time to say thank you to everybody who was here on the stage and everybody who supported us throughout the year. Uh, it is time because a lot of people would expect this at the end, and it is a kind of a really nice thing to do as well, is to have some draws. And uh, Irene, if you'd like to come forward, and uh, maybe we'll get to... I know I was going to do some running for Irene. I'm going to do I don't know how I'm going to do that at the same time as this, but... John is going to do... John is going to do... John, come on. Come on up, John. You can do your thing. I've almost got a voice as good as John Lindsay's, but... Uh, or as you used to know, Jack Richmond. So let's get it. I do want to thank everyone for being here. I need a motion to adjourn. Who will raise their hand? Oh, lots of people. Cora and Jackie Corby has uh, uh, done it as a seconder. All in favor? 
I wish you well. Drive safely home. See you next year. See you at the next car event. Oh, I have one thing to mention to you. 111 Seniors, St. Andrew's Place, Strawberry Social, Wednesday, June 19th, 12 to 2, $8 per person, lunch, craft, bake, and penny tables. All are invited.